Hi everyone, this is uh, quite awkward because I'm literally holding a huge boom stand right in my hand as I'm sitting turned around to this camera uh, just for better effect, I guess. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoy that. In today's video, we're going to learn some really cool JavaScript tricks, one-liners, functions that you can use on your websites to spice things up, to make it more fun, to be more creative, to look out for events that you might want to create cool things around or just to really annoy your friends and create websites that are just purely annoying and nothing else. So yeah, I hope you guys learn from this video and if you do enjoy it, make sure you smash the thumbs up button. Let's aim for a 500. If we can smash that, let's do 1000. And subscribe to this channel if you wanna see videos like this and projects and more because that's all coming in the future. But now uh, I wanna jump right into code, but I have to do some real awkward transition with this microphone. Uh, so I guess I'm just going to spin around. All right, all right, I hope you guys are ready to learn some code. So what you can see here is I'm in CodePen and I've created the basic HTML, and oh, that's the CSS, the HTML uh, kind of structure uh, just to be able to display this page and highlight that this is the top of the page, add some text right in the center, and then create a bottom which says back to top at the very end just to be able to clarify some of the functions and concepts that I'm going to explain to you today. Now also I have a bit of CSS that you can see which is just very basic to just make the structure happen and then we have the JavaScript and this is what we're going to focus on now. Now the first function that we're going to create is to get user selected text. Now, anytime a user highlights anything on the screen, this function will return that highlighted text to you. And you can use that to your advantage in many ways. I'll let you figure out how to do that very creatively. So I'm going to create a fat arrow function and I'm going to call it get user uh, selected text, uh, like so. And then here I'm going to return the window.getSelection dot to string, because we want to stringify everything that it gets returned, like so. And then if I open up the console, you'll probably see a bunch of errors from CodePen. These are just syntax errors. And for some reason, CodePen decides to refresh as I'm typing all the time. So all these syntax errors are coming in. Uh, I guess you should just totally ignore that. Okay, so if I go to the page and if I don't have anything selected and I tap get user selected text, like so, it'll just return an empty string, nothing inside it. Now, if I go ahead and select this text and I rerun this function, it returns the whole text. In the same instance, if I just select part of the text, it'll just return that part of the text that is selected. Okay, so let's uh, close the console and let's go on to the second function of today, which is going to be knowing when a user reaches the end of the screen. So if I can type that correctly. So whenever someone is scrolling and they get to the very end of the page, this will let you know if the user is at the end of the page. Now, of course, uh, in this instance, uh, you can trigger cool things at the very end, like uh, maybe a newsletter sign up, or maybe you want to have like a form, a questionnaire, maybe you wanna do something cool at the very end uh, within your website. So this is something that will help you do that. Now, what we can do is call window.onscroll and then continue that with like a fat arrow function because we like those. And then we're going to have an if statement and check for a condition. Now the if statement is going to be if the window dot inner height plus the window dot page y offset is greater or equal to the document dot body dot uh, offset height. Now here we have to remember that we want the window.inner height and the page y offset to perform first. So we'll just wrap it in bracket. And then in here we can just console log you are at the end of the page. So as you can see, if I open up my console again with a bunch of syntax errors for some reason, if I continue scrolling down the page and we get to the end, and that's not working because here we have off at and it should be off set height, like so. Okay, so that was just a error. And then if I scroll to the end, 
you are at the end of the page. And of course, every time it hits that pixel, it's going to trigger it. So uh, maybe a margin or setting up a margin uh, for that error would be good, but this is how it works. So I'm going to clear this and I'm going to disable this console log just so it doesn't print every single time. Now onto the next function, which in this case will be a one-liner, and it's uh, actually opposite of what we just did. And basically what this function will do is take the user back to the top. So you could have a bottom uh, at the end of your screen, which the user clicks and they just take them back uh, to the landing page, taking user back to top. Now here I'm going to set up a constant called to top. It's not a constant, but it's a function, a fat arrow function. And in here, uh, actually, I don't need to trigger it like this. I can just directly go in here and say window dot scroll to, uh, scroll to right. And here I'm going to pass in an object. And the first uh, attribute of the object will be top. And I'm going to say that it's going to be zero. And then the other thing that we can add, and it's the behavior of how the scrolling happens. And I want it to be smooth. I'll just type behavior and then pass a string called smooth, and that's it. Now, of course, uh, this will do nothing, so I'm just going to copy this function and I'm going to assign it to my HTML button as an on-click event, like so, to top, there we go. And if we go back to JavaScript and then I'll just clear this, and if I'll scroll to the bottom and click back to top, and there you go, it just scrolls nicely back to top and it does it smoothly, ooh, yeah. Let's continue and let's learn more. The next trick that we're going to learn how to do, and it's basically a one-liner, is a detect if user is in dark mode. Now, of course, when you're building a website, you want to adjust uh, certain things. You want to know if the user by default has set everything to dark mode. And of course, you'd want to probably match the website to that dark mode. So in this case, uh, we're going to detect that and I'm going to show you how to do it. So we're going to say constant is dark mode. And here we're going to say that the window dot uh, match media and inside this match media, we have to pass in a CSS uh, property with a value. And in this case, I'm going to uh, pass in prefers color scheme and I'm going to say dark and we're going to see if it is in dark mode, right? And then at the end, we're going to say matches. Now, of course, I am currently using dark mode. I would expect it to return true. So if I go to the console and I console log uh, the value of is dark mode, and it should return true. Now, of course, it says undefined here because we haven't returned this. So what I can do is uh, if this becomes a function, we need to open parentheses like so. Okay. And if I now type is dark mode as a function, it just returns true because now it's a it's a function and we have a return statement given to it. Okay, perfect. Now to the next one. I think the next one is quite cool and very simple. And uh, usually you have browser navigations to go back, but if you want to do something cool internally and uh, create your own back buttons or find an even more creative way to do that, you can definitely do that in JavaScript. Go back to previous page. Now there are two ways of doing it. You can either go history, uh, if I can type that correctly, dot back, which is an inbuilt function with JavaScript, and of course it does work, let me close this. Or you can just type history dot go and just pass in the value of minus one. So you're just returning to the previous page that you are currently at. Now to a very clever and a quite useful function, which is going to be the last one covered today, is removing duplicates from an array. Now, of course, sometimes you may be filtering for a lot of data and you just wanna display very unique items uh, to the screen. And this can be useful in many situations. Now, the way you can do that is just create a function called remove duplicates, where we will pass in an array because that's what we want to do. And what we will end up returning is we'll end up returning a new set of the passed in array. Now, why is this so clever and why is this going to work? Well, if you're aware of the data structure set in JavaScript, it's a data structure that can only hold unique values, which means that if you pass in an array with 
many, many repeating numbers or uh, many, many repeating strings. It's just going to create a set which only has unique values and remove the duplicates by itself. So if I actually go into my console again, which of course is going to have a bunch of errors because uh, they need to fix that, uh, remove duplicates and I'll pass in an array where I'll go one, 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 two, uh, two, three, three, four, five, six, six, seven, seven, seven. Of course, we'll want it to print one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and that's what the result should be. Well, in that case, let's have a look. And yes, it does. It does return an array of just unique values. Well, there you go. I hope uh, these JavaScript tricks will help you in your developing career. I hope you use them on your website and create some maybe cool and fun Easter eggs of those because you could really totally do that. Or you could just uh, have the window dot on scroll to take you to the recognize that you're at the bottom of the page and just have the user snap back automatically to the top and just annoy the shit out of them like that. <laughs> yeah, so uh, <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you very much for watching and uh, make sure you subscribe because there is a lot of really cool videos coming up uh, and big projects that I'm going to be doing that you guys can and will be able to follow along with. So uh, thank you very much for watching once again and uh, peace. I spend my Mondays like Fridays. I spend my Fridays in a box to my heart and my whining. I put my pinings on pedestals to keep them grounded. What's that mountain to nothing? Let's make some something from nada. Let's go to Gucci and Prada.